Hey, I'm Keith, and over the years, I've seen a lot of overloaded motors. Have you noticed a burning smell? Your motor's getting louder, or you're replacing new motors soon after installation? Then it's time to size, or maybe resize, an overload device for your electric motor. The Canadian Electrical Code requires an overload device to be in place, and it's one of the best ways to get ahead of downtime. Today, we'll walk you through how to size it correctly. We do have a wide selection of overload devices at emotorsdirect.ca. Once you know what you need, you should be able to find what you're looking for on the site or contact our team using the link in the description. We did overload a motor to show you what it looks like. Stick around to the end of the video to see that motor cook itself. To recap from our last video, motor overload can happen when there's too much load on the drive end of the motor. When the conveyor system to the motor's driving gets jammed, this can lead to overload. Or there could be issues with the power source, like a power surge or a short circuit. You can't control when a power surge happens, and this is where an overload device will save your motor. The cost to replace the motor is one thing, but some custom motors can take upwards of 28 weeks to be delivered. You could incur some serious downtime costs if you don't have the right overload device in place. Downtime for some of my customers works out to hundreds of thousands of dollars per day. So losing a motor to overload is a huge risk. An overload device will interrupt the circuit when the motor is drawing too much current. There are a few types of external devices you can choose from. Overload relays. These relays allow for the overload needed at startup, but if the overload persists, the relay trips and cuts power from the circuit. Overload relays are often part of the motor starter, but can be separate as well. Starters. Most electric motor starters have overload protection built in in the form of an overload relay. When an overload situation occurs, the starter trips and the power is removed from the circuit. Starters are great for motors that only require start and stop control, but not speed control. Variable frequency drives. All VFDs have an overload protection built in. And when an overload situation happens occurs, the VFD cuts power from the system. VFDs are ideal if your motor also requires speed control. And there are a few internal devices that could request with a custom motor. These are installed during manufacturing or installed by a certified motor modification facility. We won't cover these in detail today. So let's say you decided on a starter. How do you know which starter will protect your motor from overload? You must find a relay that has the correct overload rating and your starter must be tuned to the correct overload setting. Okay, we're gonna get into some math here. I've included a template in the notes section where you can plug in your numbers. These calculations are from the 2018 Canadian Electrical Code section 28-306. You'll need two ratings that can be found on the nameplate of your motor. The service factor or SF, which indicates how much load a motor can withstand before it starts to cause damage. You'll typically see ratings from one service factor up to 1.25. I see 1.15 most often for industrial use motors. And you'll need the full load amps or FLA. This rating indicates the motor's current demands as amperage. Once you have those two ratings for your motor, we'll apply them to one of these two calculations to find the maximum allowable overload setting or rating for your overload protection device. If the motor service factor is 1.15 or more, you'll multiply the full load amps by 125% or 1.25 to get the max allowable overload rating in amps. If the motor service factor is less than 1.15, you'll multiply the full load amps by 115% or 1.15. If the motor service factor is not indicated on the nameplate, assume the motor is rated as one service factor and multiply the full load amps by 1.15. Let's go over an example by calculating the max allowable overload rating on this Tico motor. Looking at the nameplate, we can see the motor has a service factor of 1.15 and the amps rating is 2.19. Since the service factor is equal to 1.15, we'll multiply the amps by 125%. The max setting or rating for an overload protection device is 2.74 amps. You do not want the rating to be higher than what you've calculated or your motor will become overloaded and be damaged due to the heat. We've included these calculations in the description below for your reference. In cases where your electric motor setup has reduced voltage starting, specifically in wide delta start motors, the max overload setting will be calculated based on the phase current and not on the line current. In Y delta start motors, the motor starts in a Y configuration and then switches to the delta configuration once the motor gets up to speed. The current draw is different in each configuration, so the max overload will be set based on the phase current. This means that you have one additional calculation to complete before you can calculate the max overload setting. 
you will use the line current to calculate the phase current. Phase current is about 57.7% of the line current. So you'll take the FLA and multiply it by 0.577 to get the phase current. We've added an example in the notes section of the video. And there you have it. With these calculations, you'll be able to find the correct relay to keep your motor safe in those unexpected overload situations. Have any questions or you have another suggestion for another topic for us to cover? Leave me a comment below. Make sure you like this video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. That smelled awful. If you ever smell burning hair, that's what it is. I'm Keith with eMotors Direct, Canada's largest motor search engine. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.